Hello, in this video I'm going to show how to add the AirSim simulator to an Unreal project from scratch. First we launch the Unreal editor, then we select new project, click the C++ tab, basic code, we actually don't need any starter content, we can call this my project. It's going to put this in the Unreal projects folder of your documents folder. Alright, sounds good. This will launch Visual Studio with this new C++ project. Okay. There's the C++ project. Notice it has an engine project and a game project specific to your game. It also has some configuration here and a U project file. Then it loads the game also into the Unreal Editor. There's no uh, interesting start here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Unreal Game Launcher. I'm going to go to the Learn section and I'm going to scroll down and look for an interesting world. I could use Boyanese Kite, but that one's about 30 gigabytes and requires a very good machine. And I'm going to choose Landscape Mountains instead. And I'm going to go ahead and click Create Project. This will download it to my machine. All right, that's done. Let's take a look at that. Here we see Landscape Mountains, and it has a bunch of content. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge that with my project. So the Unreal Engine Landscape Mountains. Let's take a look at content content, all right, maps and assets. So let's copy that over and derive data cache. Whoops, looks like that one's new. Next, we need to merge config with config. Let's see how these are different. So the config over here for the default editor looks the same. What about default engine? Over here, Landscape Mountains has a URL that has default game maps and some iOS settings. I think we can just paste all of that in here. That'll set up our default map when we launch the editor. Now that means we also need to restart the Unreal Editor. Default input, well, we, we're not going to use the same input system for the drone, so we'll don't need that. So that's it. I've merged now everything in here, but there's one more thing I need to do. The U project needs to know about our plugin, and we need to copy our plugin, which I have built over here. So I've actually run the build command script already. And what that does is it builds the code and creates a plugin folder um, where all the binaries are set up just right to be drag dropped over to our new project. So the Unreal project here and this project here, I can go in here, grab the plugins, take the whole plugins folder, because that's a special name that Unreal looks for, and drag and drop it over here. All right. Now, when we've modified the plugins like that, we actually need to refresh the Visual Studio project. So I'm going to actually have to close Visual Studio. Right click. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. If you look at the build instructions on our website, you'll notice that we need to edit the Unreal U project file and we need to add the AirSim dependencies and the plugin. So let's launch an editor copy and paste the additional dependencies here, there's a comma, and the plugin. Plugin is already there. So, all right, now I can launch the Unreal Editor to refresh the Visual Studio project. I'll show you how to do that. My project is there, double click it. All right, here's the new world that we downloaded, merged into the Unreal project that we've created for C++. If you go to the file menu, there's a refresh Visual Studio project. Now we can load Visual Studio and everything there will work fine. Again, we see the UE4 engine project and we see our project. We can now build and run this code. Before we do actually run anything, I'm going to go over here and we need to make some changes to this content that we've in imported. First thing we need to do is go to the world settings right here shows up in a tab over here and we need to change the default game mode from hang glider to sim game mode that's coming from the plugin 
that's the simulator game mode. Next thing we need to do is look at the player start position. There's actually a whole bunch of player starts that we don't need all over the map. And I'll get rid of those. And we'll just start with this one. Now, with the hang glider uh, demo, they want the hang glider to start up high in the sky. We do not want the drone to start high in the sky because it'll crash and burn. Uh, so what we need to do is bring the player start location down and onto something solid and hopefully relatively flat. So I'm going to zoom out here and look for a landing space. It looks kind of flat over there, over here, and down there. That's now underground. So let's bring it up. That's interesting. It's way over there. All right. Bring it back here. Right there. Now, this uh, player start icon is really huge um, relative to the map. So. Don't be confused by that. I'm, I want the center, the little white ball, to be just above ground so that when I hit play, the drone does not have far to fall and hit something flat. Let's hit play. All right, that was not too bad. Now let's see if this works. Turn on my radio. I'm the drone. Oh, it was already armed, sorry. I'm the drone. And off we go. Very nice. Okay. So now I can explore these landscape mountains. If I go to full screen, you have to click on the thing, hit F11. So that's full screen. And let's go with FPV with a left square bracket. And I can also, if I just want to fly for fun, I can get rid of those depth map views and so on by typing zero. And now it's just flying. I can explore this world. And uh, I'm actually up pretty high, which is why it looks like I'm flying so slowly. Love the mountain range in the distance there. Oh, I can hear some birds. Where are they? Oh, they're there, up in the sky there. Got these beautiful mountains behind me. Snow capped peaks. I got a lake down here, and look at these reflections. This is where the Unreal Game Engine really has some amazing technology. You can see there's camera flare being simulated here on the lens. Reflections in the icy lake here. It's really quite amazing, which is why we're using Unreal. It's because we want to generate video input for AI that is realistic. All right, there you have it. From start to finish, adding the air sim to an existing world. Now there's one more thing that I can show you here, which is how to add the drone manually instead of using the uh, automatic mode. So the game sim mode actually creates a drone if there isn't one that was added. So let me show you how to add the drone yourself instead of using, instead of depending on that automatic mode. If you go in and click view options, you can enable show plugin content. And then you'll see the air sim content on the blueprints. You'll see the flying pawn, which is the drone. And you can actually drag and drop that onto the map, right? Pick a spot there. All right, now you can get a better idea of the scale. I want that to be above ground. See, so now it's easier, right? Because I can actually Get rid of that one. I can actually control exactly where this drone starts. And I don't want the legs underground, so let's go like that. Now, the other thing you'll need is a camera and a BP camera. And these two need to be related to the drone. So the one of these is a camera 
that follows the drone and when you play with that camera so this guy and this guy if you look at the properties under details you can also see that this has some default properties uh, like the name of the drone as the pawn and here's the chase camera now the director ties all this together so the director says that the target pawn is this guy and the external camera that chases the pawn is this guy once you have that set up like that I can click play and notice that my chase camera is down low here as be whereas before it was up higher so the chase camera is kind of looking from down here may or may not be what you want but when you go to first person view you'll still get the first person view it's just that the chase camera is now in a slightly different offset which you can obviously modify if I go back and stop the game this is the chase camera and it's down low relative to the drone but if we want it up high looking down at the drone and maybe back a bit no problem see up higher back a bit I can take off and the chase camera is still gonna fly so that's how you set up pawn the drone the director and the chase camera manually and that's it hope you have fun